happy 2019. <laughs> I have to admit that last week I got hoodwinked, that's an old guy's word, into preaching over at the Rancho service. About two weeks before that, the brothers were talking that all the ministers were out of town. So me being a good-hearted brother, most of the time, I said, well, if you need someone to preach, I'll do it. I'm in town. So I show up last week to service, and every single minister was sitting on the first two rows of the place. I'm like, <laughs> you got to be kidding me. But hopefully you had a great holiday, and I feel like I can go home right now. I mean, the music in here was just so awesome. Amen. You should be proud of your music team and Jake. I mean, it was just, I mean, I really, in the communion, sister, that was awesome. And the contribution talk, I appreciate that. We talked a little bit before church, and I really do feel like I could go home. It's my second church service today. <laughs> and the Lord knew I needed some uh, churching. So uh, I, I am out here today to give you a little recap of what God has been doing in the region with Hope Worldwide. And so we're going to blow through about 27 slides of all the good work, including yours. Right. And then I do have a uh, message on my heart that I want to present to you today. And hopefully you'll come away encouraged, inspired, and ready to live life to the full in 2019. So as you know, hope is in uh, full swing here in the region. And you can read that. We'll probably send these slides out, maybe Scott or Jake. That way, you know, I'm not going to read all of this. But uh, I know in the desert cities, one of the highlights here has been the, the golf tournament. Right. And that's super encouraging to those of us in the other ministries that you guys do that. And it's gone well and raised money. I think also your Martin Luther King Days of Service at the Angel View. I know you're switching that up this year. All right. And going to the Coachella Valley Rescue Mission, right? Yep. And I know our sectors out there, we're knee deep, man. It's time. It's kickoff time. We got two weeks to ours. Yep. Last year we had 600 volunteers that came. Wow. And the in and out truck came. But it's just a lot of work. <laughs> That's why I brought that chair up there in case I need to sit down because I've been doing a lot of work. But anyway, that's, that's a great day. Then you've got your toy drive and Thanksgiving baskets. There's you know, a lot of different things that go on out here. We're so proud of how you serve the less fortunate. And I'm always super encouraged to make my way out here and get a lot of hugs and just the singing is incredible. You just have a great spirit in your church here in the desert cities, which is very, very encouraging. Uh, in the Rancho and Riverside sectors, we started the Hope Scouts. And uh, one of the events that uh, we did this year was to go to the uh, National Cemetery on uh, Memorial Day and to place over 200,000 flags, not by ourselves. Right. There was about a couple thousand volunteers, but that was an incredible sight to see that. And then uh, our Riverside Troop had a coastal cleanup day. It's one of the largest cleanup days in the U.S. They go to the beach with thousands and thousands of volunteers and help clean up that beach there. And there's the Rancho Troop right there. And then if you didn't know this, or maybe some of you have participated, uh, a lot of brothers and sisters have been making trips to Mexico with disciples from all over L.A. to serve in a couple different capacities. They go to a hospice and are there encouraging the patients, praying over the patients, and generally just being a, a, a goodwill servant of the Lord in people's last hours of their lives, really to encourage them. There's also trips to the Los Pinos Juvenile Camp, which are at-risk youth in Mexico. And a lot of disciples from L.A. have been going to that. By the way, if you wish to participate in any of this that I'm showing, I'll leave my, my card up here on the podium. You can take a picture of it. I'll have my cell phone and email, and you can get on the list and join other things that are going on. Uh, the singles out there in the neck of the woods where I'm from have been serving uh, on a monthly basis at the San Bernardino City uh, Mission. And it's incredible. Uh, we come out there about 5 o'clock in the morning, and we put these bins together of food, and you pull up and say, I can take eight bins. And you load them in your car or your truck, and they give you a Google map with eight places to go. And the first time I did it, it, it was incredible. I pulled up to the first apartment complex, and there was a lady out front, and her walker was expecting me coming to bring this food. And I was told to carry the food inside of her apartment and to ask if they would pray. All eight people I visited wanted to pray, and it was very humble abode that they lived in. Not a lot on the walls, mattresses on the floor, and we're literally surviving off of this food that disciples are bringing. So we do about 400 uh, people about once a month that we bring that food to, and that's incredible. Uh, of course, then last year we had our day of service there, the Mobile Go Medical Ministry uh, that we're a part of. Uh, it's incredible. We went out to see the Coachella Valley Rescue Mission. I know uh, Scott and a number of you here 
And it was really encouraging. They got a new CEO of that uh, partner of ours, and uh, I had had uh, coffee with him a couple weeks ago. And I didn't know, but he's a real smart guy, and he knows how to get a lot of money with the grants and all that. He just got a $9 million grant to build medical clinics. So he has offered to help Hope Worldwide uh, to start their own clinic. We're going to start in San Bernardino first as a model, and then we bring this out here to the desert and maybe to the riverside. Uh, but God has placed him in our path uh, to be able to serve the less fortunate, and so that'll be a vision we'll have in the years to come. You know, that ministry of the mobile medical serves at a place called Concerned Families in Paris, and they also have done food distribution. One of the big events was in July where they actually provided medical services, and there was 1,800 people who showed up to that event, and we were able to minister to them and give them services that they needed desperately. Uh, we also work with a foster care agency over there in Rancho. This is where we feed 200 homeless people uh, every month. And we got a mature disciples ministry that's doing too much stuff to share about. Yeah. But they do this great Thanksgiving banquet. I went to that. There was like 1,500 people in this room, and we served a meal to all 15. It was just wild. I just had never seen so many needy people in one place. Uh, you can look at that. So we have a couple things coming up for next year. One, Hope Around the World is launching the ESL. English for Speakers of Other Languages program, and disciples have written a Bible-based curriculum, so they're actually reading Bible stories to learn English. Amen. And what we don't know, in a lot of parts of the world, speaking English or not is the difference between making 50 cents an hour or making 12 bucks an hour. I mean, their livelihood depends on them learning English. It's a great way. We've had people already baptized through the pilot program, which is great. Uh, over in our neck of the woods, and we may uh, talk about bringing this here, is a neighborhood disaster preparedness program that has been started in the Lighthouse region. And we have a brother who's a fire captain and has access to all these materials for free. We can actually go into our neighborhoods and be undercover Bible talks. <laughs> Come over to my house, let's talk about disaster preparedness. You can make new friends, meet your neighbors, and uh, invite them to church, etc. And then we're also out in uh, my neck of the woods, there's a need for a special needs children's ministry. We're currently vetting how to do that in touch with a San Francisco church who has a program that's been in place for years that really is helping out in that way. Uh, I'm wearing my Hope Makers Mentor shirt today. That's why I'm not wearing a tie. Uh, I discovered in the San Bernardino School District that uh, they have started a mentoring program and they need volunteers. And what are we good at as a church? Wow. Volunteering. And so I signed up to, to be a mentor. You had to pass a background check. Pass that, amen. <laughs> Drug check. Pass that, amen. Gave up drugs when I became a Christian. And uh, I became a mentor. So I got invited to go to the UCLA Arizona football game along with the kids who were in the mentoring program. So I shot them a note. Can I bring my 14-year-old son? He's the same age. He's, she goes, oh, yeah, bring him along. I have to say it was really moving to sit on the bus, and I sat with the teachers. My son went in the back of the bus. I said, get the earphones out of your ear, put your phone down, and engage with some kids. So he, I didn't see him the whole time we were there. He was hanging out with the kids. So we get back at the school about 12.30 in the morning. I said, dude, I'm really proud of you, man. I'm going to go get you a milkshake. <laughs> and so we go to go get a milkshake, and we're dead tired, right? And he began to tell me story after story of middle school kids and how bad their life is. I mean, they shared this with him on the bus. Family members who were in jail, drive-by shootings where bullets are shot into their house. One of the kids said, yeah, I, I smoke pot. And my son was like shocked. You smoke pot? Do your parents know? She goes, he goes, yeah, I just can't smoke it before school. I have to smoke it after school. And he goes, well, where did you get the pot from? He goes, in my mother's drawer. This is the kind of environment in our society where kids really need help. They need to be touched by God. And I believe in mentoring them, we can save kids and they can turn out to be productive citizens in our society. One of the visions that I've had uh, even a couple of years ago was to have a village of hope right here in the United States. We have villages in other countries, right? The leper colony, we've got some in Africa. To my knowledge, we've never had a village of hope in the United States. So I was sharing with one of the guys from Health to Hope about this vision, and he says, oh, we have one of those. I go, you have one of those? He goes, yeah, why don't you come out for lunch? I'll take you. So he took me over here to the Coachella Valley Rescue Mission, and I had just never, ever seen anything like that in my life. 300 beds, ministering to battered women, to, to homeless people. They're feeding 1,000 people a day. And the success rate through their nine-month program, if you stick it out, you get a job, 
and you become a productive member of society and you're sober, that's what they define success as 83% of those people that stay for the nine months, make it through that program and are totally changed. So we're currently looking in San Bernardino for a building. And we have some connections there with the school district and through the city. We're looking to rent something for a buck a month. That's our final offer. Dollar a month, baby. And we're going to get that. Hope to Health is going to come in and build the clinic. We're going to build the psychiatric services there. And we're just going to start with that. And we're going to build ourselves a village of hope. And that's going to be totally awesome. So... Um, I'll click that in a minute. That's the, uh, yes, we're going to watch a little video today. As one of the ministers told me last week, he goes, I didn't even feel like I was at church, man. We were watching so much video. It was awesome. I go, dude, it's the holidays. It's still the holidays. It's not that far from January 1st. But I wanted to talk to you today about a episode from a new uh, TV show called God Friended Me. How many of us have seen that show? Okay, a few of them are corny, but the last one was really, really good. So the gentleman in the story's name is Miles Finer, and he's a young man in his mid-20s. He's an atheist, and when he was eight years old, his mother was killed by a drunk driver, and that shaped his view to believe that there was no God. And God sends him a friend request through social media, and naturally he's an atheist, so he doesn't believe in God, so his buddy, who's a high-tech guy, says, we're going to find out who's behind us. Well, they can't find out who's behind it because it really was God who sent the friend request. I want to show you this clip from that show, and then we'll move on. What I realized in my life, that God has always reached out to me before I was a disciple and there were certain times in my life where I ignored God, and there was times where I accepted God. And God desperately wants to send you a friend request this year. God's saying, I want to be close to you. Come on, Rich. I want to get deep down inside of you and have your heart super close to me. And he sends you that request. And the interesting thing is in my life that I've struggled with over time is, what worth am I to God? I don't know if you ever feel that way, but the first point today is I am very valuable to God. Not we, not us, you individually are valuable to God, the creator of the universe. Not because you come to church, not because you shared your faith 32 times this week, not because you had 14 Bible studies. Inherently, God values you because he created you. In our performance-driven world, that's very hard for us to grasp that. Our jobs tell us we're worth something if we accomplish something. Right. Sometimes we think and we look in the mirror, if only I could be a little thinner, I could feel a little more valuable. I've lost 11 pounds since January 1st. Wow. Right. One more notch in the belt, boom. <laughs> but the truth is, sometimes I've looked and I go, wow, God, I don't really feel that great about myself. But God values me. And I'm here today to impress in you and to encourage you and to impress upon you that God values you tremendously for no other reason than that he created you. Right. You know, the creation's value is determined by its creator, just like a painting. A painting is valued by the person who painted it. And brothers and sisters, we need to have this pressed down deep in our heart. Let's turn over to Psalms chapter 139. And we're going to read a series of scriptures here today that will tell us how much God values us. Amen? Amen. You know, one of the things that I, uh, that Scott had reminded me about when I was here uh, a while back is my, uh, my story of uh, my biological father, who I thought was Robert Rugsager for 53 years, and then I got this whammy of, I'm not really your dad. And I think I told you last time I had found my dad. And uh, created a lot of feelings in me of, what am I worth? No one's told me this. And my real dad hasn't reached out to me for 54 years. And what really value am I? And I begin to struggle with that. And getting into the scripture has really helped me. But a little update on the story. I actually did talk to my biological father and uh, my half, uh, uh, I guess he's my half brother. 
And what the family had decided to do, we've had more conversations, was they didn't really want to have a relationship with me. And that was tough. They were trying to protect their mother, who's 81 years old. She knows about me, but now I'm a real person. Baby Rich has showed up at the front door, and it's disturbing, you know? And they're trying to protect her, wanting her to pass on and then insert me into that family. So that's been tough, and I've, I've had to go to God to gain value and to really see how, what God really thinks about me. In Psalm 139, verse 13, For you created my inmost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb. You know, I thought about that. You know, my mother and my biological father were both married to other people at the time that I was conceived. But you know who was right there? I'm not a mistake. I mean, God was right there, at, right at that, even the craziness of that and the sinfulness of it and all that, God was still right there. The creator of, of everything was right there with Richie Rich <laughs> while I was being, I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. You know, I'm valuable to God. I'm working on that, but I look at myself and I go, God really values me. Not because I'm preaching a sermon today. Not because I was in the ministry for whatever. Not because my wife is really cute and good looking and she's awesome. My kids like me too most of the time. You know, even the last couple of months have been the most prosperous financial months I've ever had in my entire life. And that's a blessing from God. But there's a part of me that, you know, you start making change, you start making some money, you know, you start thinking of, I'm this and that and the other. Yeah. And to put all that to a side, God values me just because I'm his creation. Right. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, this thing keeps putting a passcode on here. I've got to figure out how to get rid of that. But anyway, <laughs> then God said, let us make man in our image. So God created mankind in his own image, male and female. And he said it was very good. Psalm 147, the Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their hope in his unfailing love. Psalms 103, 11 through 12, for as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. Amen? Amen. Isaiah 41, 10, so do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you, and I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Isaiah 49, 15, can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. I know in a group this size, some of us are lonely. Some of us have things deep, maybe deep down inside of us. God has not forgotten you. Yeah. You're valuable to God. Yeah. For our young people, it doesn't matter if you're wearing the latest fashion. Yeah. Man, my son's got hair products more than my wife. He's doing this. He's doing that. He's got the curls going on. You know, he's part African-American. So he's got, we've got Amazon, baby. We've got all kinds of stuff coming to the house. But, you know, trying to teach him it's not about what you look like or the latest fashion that you have or that the people at school think you're cool. God thinks you're valuable. The creator of everything looks down to you and says, you are flat awesome. And we have to get, and I have to get this deep down inside of my soul. I love this verse, Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. You know, the day that I went to pick up Noah, adopted him 14 years ago from foster care in Glendora, there was a nice couple who were foster parents and they had five girls of their own and they took care of Noah for 40 days. Maybe that's why we call them Noah. I'm not really sure if that happened, but they had him for 40 days and 40 nights and his name's Noah, but... So they made a little, they made a little uh, if you're ever over at the house, uh, my wife has a little book on the front uh, little bookcase. They took a picture of him every day for 40 days. He's born uh, October 1st, so he made it through Halloween, had a little costume on him. And uh, they didn't know what to name him. He didn't come from the hospital. He was in the hospital one day, came into their home. They didn't know what to name him. So the lady's favorite verse, which is my wife's favorite verse, is Jeremiah 20, 9, 10. And she looked up, it was crocheted on her wall and framed, and she looked up at that and she said, I'm calling him Jeremiah. 
So they named him Jeremiah for 40 days, and we didn't know how well that would go in school. <laughs> so we gave the alternate choice of, of Noah, and I believe God has great plans uh, for every one of us here in the room. Let's move on to the next verse. This is a really great one in Zephaniah. Hold on a second. Three verse 17, this is the ESV version. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love, and he will exult over you with loud singing. You know, God values you and I. If you're not doing something or not performing right, God still values you tremendously. Your worth has been determined before you've even got to this point. And as a Christian, my role in 2019 for me and my goal is, is to have that deep down inside my soul. Not just say it, because I think we can read these verses, but in the center of your soul, when you wake up, you go, God values me today. God thinks I'm awesome. God loves me. His son died for me. And the scriptures prove it. We could go on and on and on in Matthew 6. It talks about... Don't worry, your father knows what you need. Matthew 10, verse 29 to 31. Even the hairs of your head are all numbered. You flat get a haircut and it changes and God can keep track of all that stuff because he cares about you that much. John 3, 16. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Romans 5, 6 through 8. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Brothers and sisters, don't let Satan or anybody whisper in your ear that you're not a valuable person. Amen. It doesn't matter your shape, your size, your hairdo, your type of clothes. Whether you performed last week or not at the job, at church, or whatever, you are just flat valuable to God. Yeah. Don't let anybody steal that from you. That's important. I believe if we hang on to that, we'll do all the things that God wants us to do. And I believe that a lot of us have that deep down in our hearts, and that's why we become disciples. I want to show you a, a, a second video here. In the story here, uh, Miles from God Friended Me is encouraged to confront the drunk driver who killed his mother. My second point for today is we need to get real and we need to get raw. Let's take a look at this video. I don't know if you have anything in your life or in the past that you've had to get real and raw about. I've had plenty of things. And actually, I had one that happened at, at Christmas. My, uh, before I was a Christian, I was married and uh, divorced and have a son who's 31 years old. He has three beautiful little girls that are my grandkids, three, two, and one. And they're awesome. They came over to Grandpa's house after Christmas and were able to hang out. And uh, so we put them to bed and uh, start having a conversation at the kitchen table. And, you know, the holidays for me uh, over the years has been a little bittersweet. You know, he was three years old when I got divorced, and you have this every other weekend thing, and you split holidays, and it was always a struggle. You know, you want your kid to be with you, right? Santa comes, you know, right, and gets the presents, and you want your kid there. And it's always been a little bit of a struggle. And so we started to talk about that at the dining room table with my daughter-in-law and my wife. And my 14-year-old was listening from afar, and so he came in and inserted himself at the table. And I was like, sit down, man, buckle up. <laughs> and we just, I started to express how I just hurt feelings. And now you're older, and, you know, we want you here for Christmas. Can't always be at the other place, and... So we were going back and forth, and my daughter-in-law was texting my wife, like, is everything okay? Do you guys still like us? Because <laughs> it started to get raw and real. And my son looked at me, he said, you know, Dad, if you had gotten divorced, I wouldn't have to make the choice of which house to go to. And that stung, because that's re real, man, and that's raw. And he was angry. And I realized that, man, there's, there's work to be done. But my value, God still thinks I'm valuable even though I did that. Yeah. My value allows me to get real and raw. Because no matter what I say or what I do, God values me. Yeah. Come on, Rich. No matter the mistakes that I've, I've made, I'm a valuable person to God. Okay. Come on. But it was real. Till two, it was 2.30 in the morning. We ended that real and raw conversation. But it was great. 
I haven't stayed up that late in a long time, so I kind of <laughs> slithered to bed, you know. And we got up the next morning. My daughter, she goes, is everything okay? So we huddled, you know, and said, I love you no matter what. And he told me he loved me, and we had a prayer and went snowboarding with the kids <laughs> right after that. You know, the Bible speaks to us in many great examples, but one of the greatest examples is, is David. And... In Psalms 3, verse 7 through 8, David says, Arise, Lord, deliver me, my God. Strike all my enemies on the jaw and break the teeth of the wicked. He doesn't say, oh, God, I hope it gets better. He's like, break their jaw. <laughs> Knock them in the teeth. I had a brother who I was trying to help, and he was having some problems. And I said, well, just rebuke Satan. He goes, you could do that? I go, try it. You get tempted. Next time you look and you say, Satan, get away from me. So he tried it out. He called me a couple of days later. He goes, dude, it really works. I go, it's in the Bible, man. You got a problem? Get real and raw. God allows us to. It's right here in the scriptures, right? Psalm 51, verse 7 through 12, David had committed adultery, murdered the person's husband. He was doing so bad spiritually, he even says, Grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. He didn't even have the will to go on. He said, even give me the will to go on. I've been in that place before. There's times in my Christian walk where I just walked around the block and just cried. I go, I just don't know what to do. So discouraged, so just overwhelmed and just, God, give me the willing spirit to make it to Wednesday or to Sunday church, just to one step in front of the other. Let me ask you this. Will you get real and raw this year? God gives you the, here, here's the ticket to get real and raw, because you, it won't diminish your value. We do as human beings, we hear, we go, oh my God, I can't believe that brother or that sister. But God's not like that. God still values us and continues to believe in us. In Psalm 73, David writes, I envied the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked, they have no struggles. Have you ever felt like that? Man, I don't know about you, but Christmas time, I see people getting cars and getting crazy gifts, and I go, whoa, they just have no struggles. I'm trying to get my rear end to church. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do that. And just struggling through, through life, you know, to keep, keep going. And sometimes people that aren't trying to walk with God, they don't seem to have any problems. And it's okay to get real and raw about that. We're going to take a look at one last video. Let me see how I'm doing on time here. Okay, we got time. Let's do it. This is where, you know, God values us and allows us to get real and raw. And lastly, heaven is worth the journey. You know, the journey that we're on and the call to get real and raw is worth it. In John chapter 14, Jesus said, I prepared a place for you. My father's house has many rooms. And I have one for you. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it says that at the trumpet blast, at the twinkling of an eye, just a twinkle, we're all going to be changed. And Jesus comes back. I hope I'm alive for that. I think that's going to be really, really cool. But we're changed. There's going to be no more sorrow, no more pain. Get to trade in your old worn out body. No sorrow in heaven. It's going to be totally awesome, guys. It's totally worth it. Whatever you're going through, God values you. Get real and raw, but it's worth it. Yeah. We had a memorial yesterday of one of the disciples, Nina uh, Alice. Amen. I think she was in her 80s, died faithful. Amen. A couple hundred people were there. It was, just, it was just incredible, but there was an incredible sigh of relief of like, wow, she's in, she's in heaven. Yeah. She made it the goal of her faith. She, right now, she could come here would say, guys, it's totally worth it. It's great. Yeah. I got a mansion. The streets of gold are really real. It's awesome. You can make it one more day at a time. It's totally worth the journey. Yeah. And how it's described in Revelation uh, chapter 21, it describes the time that we'll meet Jesus as us being the bride of Christ. And, you know, I got married 25 years ago. This summer, we've had a 25-year wedding anniversary. And just the other day, and we'll close with this, I was going through a box of uh, cards that we wrote each other. These were very popular cards back in the day. <laughs> Black and white, right, with the roses that were red. 
And uh, I just incredible uh, to read some of this and, and to think about this is how God and Jesus view us and me and you as, as his bride. Rich, I just wanted you to know, I think you're the best. Thank you so much for always making me feel so whatever that word is, I can't read it. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I'm so excited about our day tonight. I can't wait to see you. I hope it was a great day. I thought about you and smiled. That's why we were dating. And then there's the day I asked her to be my girlfriend. The artwork's not too good over there, but I'm not an artist. <laughs> but you know, I was, just, I was just reading this. Wow, I appreciated her passionate relationship with God. Her heart of pureness is something to cherish. Down in there, I said, I love the way you throw football. The very first time I re met Renee was at a park service. And I thought, who is that sister zinging that football like a brother? <laughs> and she's really pretty and cute. I thought, whoa, I get both? And I go, that's going to be my girl right there. And there's just a whole stack of cards. From the moment I dated till we were engaged, till we were married, and even the ones afterwards, just a whole big stack. I just, I'm just so in love with my wife. And I thought about Jesus and God describing the end as us, you, as his bride at the end of time to meet him. Why? Because God really, really values you. Brothers and sisters, in 2019, let's hold our head up high, not in an arrogant way, but because the creator of all things made you, and he values you, and he even welcomes you to get real and raw because he can take it. He's a big boy. Yeah. But at the okay. end of the day, guys, it's really worth the journey. Yeah. And if you think we inside here need this, our world is a hurting world. Right. Our world is an absolute mess. Citizens of our country are screaming, I want to be valued. Yeah. Don't talk about me like that. Don't be prejudiced against me. I mean, we have movements all over the crazy place. And my time is up. I love you, brothers and sisters. Let's continue to see how God really values us. Amen. Let's get real and raw, and it's totally worth the journey. Let's go hand in hand together, and let's make it all the way to heaven. Amen. Amen.